Facebook find Bigfoot. Update on the camper video and final confirmation analysis. We're going to verify that this is a real video. We've looked at the HD version of the cell phone video with the addition of a second short clip. This is likely one of the best videos ever taken. With the addition of the extra clip, we'll classify it as the number two of all time. Why? It shows six key characteristics at close range. Large nocturnal eyes with no white showing, a hooded nose with downward facing nostrils, is at the cheekbone level with a long lower lip, upper lip, a forward sloping neck with long spinous processes, the shoulders and muscles can see, can be clearly seen moving. And what appears to be about 20 feet, this is the closest image of a Sasquatch ever seen. Um, clip one is the, called a Sasquatch preoccupied at 720 feet. All right, now we'll rotate it so you can see it and moving back and forth and it's doing something. It's, we have a kind of idea that it may be eating as it goes back and forth. You can see the screen moving back and in and out of focus. Clip two, we call face to face, exhale, then adrenaline rush. The Sasquatch is staring straight at the filmer. It appears that this is meant to be a simple photo. Listen to the exhale at the end. It's incredible. Now clip two was D-shaped, magnified, and looped. This is the face of a living, breathing Sasquatch. Well, there it is, a living Sasquatch looking straight at you. I can't even imagine how that filmer felt. That's very, very powerful. So what has happened in clips one and two? Well, something has caused a preoccupation it's drawn his interest to the tree. The young poster mentioned eating in one of the emails back and forth. It may hear the camera and turns toward the tent. In clip two, it has been taking a strategic position behind the tree. Tree peeking is commonly seen in our young children. A natural defensive position, even though it's rarely needed in our society. The tree peeking is seen in the number 19 huge Alabama Sasquatch. And you can see it right there. It's amazing. It's just watching. It's about 10 feet tall. It's massive. It's observing. This is taking the exact same position behind. What could it be eating? Maybe a candy bar. But it can clearly be seen. It's like some white things coming out of the right side of his mouth. You can watch the mouth move. You may not be able to see this as well online, but you can actually see the muscles moving. It's like jammed in there. This of the green thermal footage. This is so unreal that some need to prove to themselves it isn't real. Well, Morris and Hieronymus tried to pretend they could do a suit that would replicate Patterson and Gimlin. But note the high forehead of a modern human. It doesn't fit inside of this cranium. Watch the muscles in the left scapular rise and abduct. It's because they are slightly different. They are much bigger trapezius and rhomboidus muscles and allow them to climb or pull whatever. In modern humans, these are diminished tremendously, and it's not quite the same. You can see them attach here. They come all the way up. They attach right up to the base you know, uh, of the skull. And you see that shoulder rise as it makes, it turns around to look to the left. You just can't make a suit that's like this that's so anatomically correct. At two times speed, if you speed it up, you really can start to see the tendons in the neck because they're kind of moving slow. Now we'll make them move faster. And you can see, it's just incredible. They're, it moves back, forth. It's just not a normal human, not normal human back muscles. Okay, could it be CGI? We've talked about this a little before. No, there's a screen between the subject and the camera. One of video experts said there's no way because you, you have a green screen. We can't have a screen between the image and the filmer and then it's going in and out of focus. So let's talk about morphology. It has a high hooded nose. It's a human shaped nose and it has extraordinary significance. People have had hundreds of eyewitness sketches 
And you normally have a long upper lip, but sometimes different people have different theories. Out of Africa theories, theorists envision like a, an ape-like nose. But that's not all, at all what Bigfoot's all about. It's not like the surviving grapes, great apes that have a forward-facing nostrils. These nostrils just let water in. FBFB Jeff, founder Jeff Anderson interviewed a man who had a 20-minute observation of a face in West Virginia, and he saw this hooded nose and these downward-facing nostrils. Let's compare it to the William Evans baby in the car on the tree. He focuses in. It's hiding right there, and you can see the eyes, the mouth, and you see the, the nose, but you can't quite see the nostrils. You can't quite see because it's kind of... You see the side of it, but here you get to see the nostrils. This is the closest and best thing because it's 720p. It's great. So look at the nose and profile. You can see it sticks kind of forward. You can see there's heavy cheekbones and a heavy brow ridge. Uh, do Sasquatch have large nocturnal eyes? Well, yeah, well, you don't see any whites here, do you? Okay. This is seen in the formerly number two video, now the number three video, The Woodpile Thermal by Christopher Noel. And here you see this thermal image with these big, huge nocturnal eyes. And you can measure the tree, you can measure the milled boards, and you can see that this is a huge fella, you know, four inches across, whereas in modern humans, only two and a half inch. That's very important for other reasons, but you can kind of see the same thing here. These are just not normal eyes. They're just set right below a brow ridge. All right, look at the back and neck muscles moving, and you see a slope to the back. That's pretty nice. Beautiful. Look at the sheen and the coat, everything as it walks all the way down, keeps walking through the debris field. Well, you see that same kind of slope here. It's kind of like a gorilla. Okay. We talk about cone head a lot. It's because the, the head is forward on the crania. It's down. It's not in the same position of a modern human. It doesn't sit directly on top of the shoulders. It sits forward, and so there's a slope to the back, so the, it can kind of connect to the head. It's at a different angle, and you see this in many of the drawings, and you actually can kind of see how the, the forehead it, you know, of a human is like that. Here's uh, number 15, South Jersey Sasquatch. Here's number 22, perfect profile. You can see that same, you know, lack of a uh, forehead. You see a backward slope. Here's Prince Edward Island, like number six or so. You see it going along. Here's number 21, the fence jumper by M.K. Davis, 48 inch fence. So it goes over. You see that coned head. And backwards, nice smooth run. Super thick vault is two and a half times thicker in these old archaic humans. Okay, it gives protection for nocturnal forest pursuit. That's why the forehead in your body is the strongest bone. Because if you hit a, you know, break your head running through the forest at night, that's what it is. Now auburn hair is probably the best uh, color at night as far as deep sea hunters, is they have this auburn hair. Well, you see it in this film. You'll see it in LaRaysville and about oh, maybe eight other films. But here, you can see that beautiful auburn color. Well, that, in low light conditions, is actually better than black for hunting. Sounds unusual, but it is. And that's why all the deep sea creatures have this same kind of red color, because you can't see it. A forward sloping neck with the long spinous processes and the high shoulders are pretty important. Okay, This is seen in the number nine. Freeman film. The Freeman film, at one point, the creature is turning and its head's down and it's turning to the side, it kind of lifts and turns. The three kips Miyaka, you see the high shoulders there. It's pretty awesome. Boom, there's the money shot. And as it walks away, you see the high shoulders. So the heavy brow ridge is also called a suborbital torbus. And you see it there, you see that, that uh, ridge along the top. There you can see where the, earlier in the film, you can see the brow ridge when he's turning at the right angle. You also see that in the Minnesota Auburn, as it runs through the trees, 
You can see how that brow ridge would be very important to protect the eyes and also be very important to have that cranial vault to protect against you hitting the trees, you're running through. Pretty cool. That's the natural human body plan. Some humans actually have that same body plan even today. The cranial keel is also seen in this. And this is something we've never featured in any of our videos, and so we're not sure exactly how anyone would know this. But you can see it. There's a little bump right above the, the brow ridge. That bump, bump is a very important strength point. Now, you can kind of see that same thing in the Pennsylvania White very quick video. In humans, you see that heavy brow, and you see that cranial keel. Conclusions. Well, we have seen tens of thousands of fake videos, even movie quality videos. Either this was a pure accident and it is certainly a Sasquatch, or an extra measure of genius and determination was needed to get a Sasquatch this close. We believe that it is nearly impossible to produce a suit um, with its exacting detail without CGI. This is a living, breathing creature. Sasquatch shockingly occupied the whole of North America and operated a tremendous physical and mental advantage to modern humans. We have waited for a film like so long to see the nose of a Sasquatch. It has tremendous significance. The secret of your existence in our great society is as clear as the nose in your face. In fact, it is the nose in your face. It allowed us to become the social creatures we have become. In the last chapter of the book, You Are a Sasquatch, we talk about what name will give this creature when it is discovered by science. Homo erectus americanum. Homo primum, the first man. Might we suggest a, a name as magnificent as Homo noctum magne venato, or whatever the correct Latin name is, for the great night hunter? We can't think of a name that is more appropriate and complex for what is truly the smarter ape. Congratulations to whoever took this film. Facebook by Bigfoot.